What's good, Commanders fans? The Commanders or Adam Peters just signed both. Commanders and Adam Peters have signed another free agent. And then also uh, there is some reports or rumors from Tom Palacero that I'm going to talk about some draft uh, rumors and reports that he's coming out with what he's heard through the grapevine. But uh, let's talk about Michael Dieter here, Michael Dieter. He was on the Dolphins, went to Wisconsin, and played in college with Tyler Biotis. Uh He is a center. He's a backup center. But he did start for the Texans for 10 games, blocked for C.J. Stroud. They made the playoffs. So he did just enough to help C.J. Stroud get the football out. Man command plays, direct traffic, good stuff like that, helping C.J. Stroud out. Um, but you look at some of his background, six foot six, 315 pounds, third-round pick. Uh, played left guard as a rookie with the Dolphins with a PFF grade of 42.5. In 2021, he was moved to center and finished the year with a PFF grade of 60.6. So he does have positional flex. Uh, we know the previous regime would have loved that. And, um, you know, we got a couple guys on the roster with, with positional flex as well. I do want to talk about some things that Adam Peters said in a presser today as well. That is actual, actually factual, that things that he said uh, in a presser. But this guy most likely is going to be a depth signing. I think left guard, center, of course, is going to be Tyler Biotis. Right guard is going to be Sam Cosme. Right tackle, most likely Andrew Wiley. Left tackle is still a big question mark, man. I, I just, I really wish Adam Peters would draft, would sign a veteran left tackle. I've told him, but just kind of, kind of like the cornerback, I have the same opinion on both positions. I get it. We're going to draft a left tackle, most likely in the first, really, really the second round. I think we're going to move up into the first round and then draft a left tackle or early second round and, and draft a left tackle or whatever, whatever. We got two second round picks, so we're definitely going to use it on left tackle for sure in the second round or move up into the first and get a left tackle. Either one. I know Adam Peters is going to do that, but with releasing Charles Lano, and I'm not going to act like Charles Lano was an elite left tackle, I do think you need a veteran left left tackle to come in and mentor. Okay, that's just my opinion. A stopgap left, stop left tackle. I still think there's a couple of left tackles that are available that we can go get. But if he wants to throw out a left tackle that's a rookie, I, you know, we'll see what happens. We'll see what I don't have to agree with everything Adam, Peter, Adam Peters does. But I do like what he's done so far. I like what he's done for the most part. Same thing with corner. I think they need a veteran corner. But uh, Michael Dieter, uh, like I said, 20, 27, 6 foot 6, 350 pounds. Uh, this is another write-up here. Interior off the lineman entering his sixth year out of Wisconsin. Started 10 games at, at center for Houston in 2023. He was serviceable. In 506 pass blocking snaps, he allowed 25 pressures, three sacks, and had five penalties. Now, three sacks, he's just... He's just a backup, you know, but he came in and played pretty solid as a um, as a starter for the for the um, for the Texans, and uh, did what he had to do. You look at some more of his PFF grades. He had a he had a pretty pretty underwhelming year when you look at some of the. Actually, the whole Texans offensive line was not great, other than Laramie Tunzel. Laramie Tunzel had an eighty one point five PFF grade. Uh, I know I don't want to just base everything on PFF, but. Juice Scruggs, the left guard, had a 48.6 PFF grade. Michael Dider with a 57.2, which is below average. Shaq Mason, 67.5, which is okay. And George Fant with 62.9. So that just kind of shows you how good CJ Stroud had, how good of a season he had with not having an elite offensive line. They had one really elite guy, Laramie Tunzel, and that's about it. Everybody else was kind of like, you know, mid tier guys. And CJ Stroud was still getting it done. So uh, Michael Dider, I think he's going to be a good backup. Uh, was a good mentor to, to Tyler Biotic. And there's a quote that he uh, had talking about Tyler, Tyler Biotic. He said, uh, Tyler Biotic talking about Michael Dider. He said, quote, I picked Michael Dider's brain pretty good my first two years there at Wisconsin. He kind of led me my first year. I was asking him all these questions. What do you think about this and that? My goal was to mold my game after him when he played center there. It was a blessing playing around him and just learning the game. He's a great overall dude, end quote. So that was from Reese Manuel. <laughs> On Twitter, he found that quote. Shout out to him. He's a good guy. He's a part of the Techno Network, which is affiliated with Locked On. Locked On is, I want to say Locked On is like founded by Techna. Techna works with Locked On, vice versa. Uh, we reached Manuel's work with Techna. So we're technically kind of co-workers a little bit. So good find for him. Um, so that would be good that they, they played together. So the guy we got from Kansas City He's going to be our starting left guard, but we know that Michael Dider can come in in a pinch and play left guard. So if those guys play together, they have the utmost communication and chemistry together. So that would be intriguing to see Biotis at center and then Michael Dider at left guard. So that would be intriguing to uh, see that. And Michael Dider, let's just look at his NFL draft right up here. 
uh, durable, capable guard, center prospect who knows how to play the game, but might lack the athletic elements needed to become a full-time starter on the next level. Dieter's experience in, variety, in a variety of pro-style running schemes and his overall technique work are in his favor while his experience across the line all for flexibility, positional flex that could lock him into an NFL roster as an early backup with the potential to step in and start if needed. Strengths are broad waist and thick chest. <laughs> they always have the weirdest sayings in these in these write-ups. Uh, excuse me, broad waist and thick chest. Posted double digit starts at left tackle, left guard, and center. That's good to know. In college, durable lunch pail guy who answers the bell each week. Adequate initial quickness. Strikes with upward blow into initial contact and rolls his hips. Uh, rolls hips under him for lift. Good leg drive into double teams and down blocks. Finishes with vigor. Once he gets his upper hand, plus awareness to pass and catch twisters, punches tight, efficient and well timed, adequate technique in both run and pass games. So that's a write up on uh, Michael Dider there. So uh, some good things. And he was like the all decade team for all, he was the all Big Ten decade team at Wisconsin. So he was a legit beast at Wisconsin. And like I said, he mentored Tyler Biotis. So nothing but good things that I'm hearing by, about Michael Dider. But if you look at comments and stuff like that, he's more of a backup. And that's just the, what he's going to be. But he could compete with the guy from Kansas City. I'm, I'm blanking on his name. I think they, I, I think Adam Peters brought the guy in from Kansas City to start a left guard. But who knows? You never know. Competition, you never know. And injuries happen, knock on wood. So this guy, Michael Dider, could come in and start. Let's see how durable he's been. 16 games in 2023. 17 games, zero starts in 2022. Eight games in 2021 and eight starts in 2021. 2020 played in 16 games, no starts. As a rookie, he had 16 games of 15 starts. Uh, he had one catch as well for zero yards in uh, his rookie season in 2019. Probably was like an accidental catch or something like that. He was part of one of the worst offensive lines in the NFL. Uh, and I want to say 2021. Yeah, I want to say 20, the Dolphins had the, like, they, they had the worst ranked offensive line. He was a part of that offensive line. So that's the background of Michael Dyer. All right. Let's get to the real stuff here. Uh, Adam Peters said today at his media gathering about John Allen, we're not interested in trading him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quickly rapidly get through some of the Adam Peters stuff here. Um, GM Adam Peters said the team has not discussed whether or not to exercise the fifth-year option on uh, linebacker Jamin Davis. I would not pick up his option if it was up to me. Uh, he just hasn't been good enough. And I like Jamin. I, I, I like him a lot. I think he's a good guy, character guy, military background, speed, can get to the quarterback. Made some plays last year, forced a fumble, got an interception, made plays last year. Uh, the game ceiling interception against B. John Robinson and the Falcons. Uh, he called game with the pick, uh, forced a fumble on Russell Wilson. He stepped up and made, and made plays, and I like that when he's making impactful plays. He got more interceptions than Cam Curl. So I would not pick up his option, though. I just wouldn't. I wouldn't. He just hasn't shown enough. And to pay him amount, that amount of money, I just would not do it. So that's just my take on uh, Jamin Davis. And off the, off the court, off the off the field stuff with the speeding and stuff like that. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna ding him for that, but he's gotta be smarter than that. He just has to. He has to be smarter than that. going seventy five and a thirty or whatever it was, or eighty five and a forty or whatever it was, you just can't do stuff like that. I know you're young. I like to speed. I used to speed a lot back in my day. You know, I like to uh kinda I'm not gonna say I drag race and stuff like that, but you know, I, I did like to speed and whatnot. But like I said, at the same time, you just got to be smarter, man. You got to be smarter, Jamie. And it is what it is. Um, and then about Jonathan Allen, remember all the stuff. When he went on the radio, he was like, I, I, I can't lie. I can't say I haven't thought about being traded or requesting a trade and being on a better team. He did come out and say that. But then at the the 106.7, the fan, uh, our Team 980, Odyssey app, a ceremony, whatever it was, he said he does not want to be traded. So he did come out and say that. And, and I don't, Peter, I wouldn't trade John Allen either unless he requested a trade. If he requested a trade, I'd be like, okay, yeah, where you want to go? I'm going to trade you. But if he wants to be here, I'm going to keep him, especially with him, Bobby Wagner, Deron Payne, Frankie Louvu. I'm not trading him. You want to keep as many as much talent as you can keep on a defense. So, heck no, I'm not trading Jonathan Allen. All right, uh, let's see here. What else? Um, I think that's about it. All right, um, let's talk about Jason McCarthy here. So, Tom Pelissero says, when I've had conversations here with executives from other teams who knows Adam Peters well, who know the situation well, the most popular answer for what they do at number two is Jason McCarthy. So that was like the biggest bombshell. Like a lot of people are overreacting and going crazy over that. And a lot of people think it's cap. They don't think it's real or true. They think it's phony. And I kind of do too. I think it's a smoke screen. Now, when he was with San Fran and, and um, Kyle Shanahan was the guy who really wanted to trade Lance, you know, a lot of people were like, oh, they're going to trade it for Mac Jones. But they ended up trading and trading up and getting 
Trey Lance. So they kind of kept people on their heels and didn't want to re really want to play their cards. And this could be what Adam Peters is doing. I don't think it's really necessary to go and just say I'm a draft Jason McCarthy or Jaden Daniels or Drake May at this point. Like, I don't think there's a point saying I would not trade back. People saying trade back, do not trade back. You got to get a quarterback. Like, the main goal of this draft in this year is finding the quarterback. Like, that's all that really matters. That's all that shit matters, getting quarterback. And uh, Jaden Daniels, that got to be. I like, I like Drake May too, but but Jason McCarthy, I think he's just he's a game manager now. You you didn't get to see much of him, so it's, he's more of a projection guy. Like you look at some of the games, he only threw the ball like eighteen times, seventeen times. Uh, Blake Corum was the engine of the car, the head of the snake. Yeah, he threw the ball eighteen times in a championship game. Threw the ball twenty times against Ohio State, eight times against Penn State. That's ridiculous. Seventeen times against Indiana. That was a blowout win though. Uh, twenty times against Minnesota. That was a blowout. 16 times against Nebraska, that was a blowout. 13 times against Bowling Green, that was a blowout as well. So, I mean, there's a lot of games where he's just not throwing the football. 220 yards against Alabama, 140 yards against Washington, 147 yards against Iowa, like, not even getting close to 200 yards. 148 yards against Ohio State, 141 against Maryland, and uh, one interception, 60 yards against Penn State, uh, 335 yards against Purdue. So he, it looks like they took the training wheels off and let him throw the football that game. Uh, three touchdowns. I'm sorry, no zero touchdowns, no picks. But um, yeah, it's just like you know you're gonna you're gonna pass up on Jaden Daniels or Drake May to go with JJ McCarthy. He's just an unproven guy, in my opinion. Who has you know he has mobility. Like he's a mobile guy. Like he's somewhat of a dual threat quarterback. Like he's nowhere near Jaden Daniels. I don't think he's close to really Drake May, but he is athletic. So and his out his, his inside the numbers he's really good, but outside the numbers he's really bad. There's numbers to back that up too. So his accuracy is questionable. Reading the defense past the second read is questionable, and it just you know he just didn't have he didn't have a lot of opportunity to really show showcase a lot. Like you look at some of the games last year though in twenty twenty two, the game against TCU, he, you know he's, he was slinging the ball a little bit. They lost that game fifty one to forty five, but that was one game where he was kind of slinging the ball around and kind of got to showcase some of his skill set. So personally, I, I don't think he's good enough to take him take him at number two. I hope the Giants get him. I think that would be great to replace J Daniel Jones with basically another Daniel Jones. I would love for that to happen, but I'm not going to step up here and say J.J. McCarthy's trash, but I just think guys are better than him. Jaden Daniels is better than him and Drake May. They're just better than him, and they've shown more than him. Um, they have more more potential than him, and, and they have um, they just they just shown more than him. So I, I would not be I would not take a chance on him at number two, an unproven guy like J.J. McCarthy, more of a game manager. You know, guys that can Drake Drake May has shown that he can put his team on his back. And um, Jaden Daniels clearly has shown that he can do that and change the game with the snap of a finger, like running for 34 yards in one play, 75 yards. Look, look at the Florida game. So, um, yeah, I mean, Tom Palacero, we'll see. We'll see how true this is. Hopefully he's just making something up and just throwing something at the wall. But he is putting his reputation on this, though. Tom Palacero, he's a guy that is trusted. I don't think he's just coming out of nowhere with this. But at the same time, this is this is lying season. And this is where you want to have a smoke screen and make people believe one thing, but you're really going to do something. You know, you don't want to play your cards and show your poker face and stuff like that. You want to you, you want to have a poker face and not show show your cards and show people what you're doing, you know. So I get it, Adam Peters. I get what he's doing. I get what he's doing for sure. So um, Jason McCarthy, yeah, I mean, I think it would be an uproar. If we did draft him, it kind of would be like that Daniel Jones reaction for the Giants. The Giants fans went crazy when they, when they draft uh, Daniel Jones. So... Uh, but yeah, you look at his accuracy out, outside the numbers, 27.1% un uncatchable throw rate uh, last year outside the numbers. So that was pretty bad. But inside the numbers, he was really, really good throwing the football. 85.6% um, adjusted completion percentage inside the numbers. So those are some things on Jason McCarthy, but I would not take him at number two. All right, you guys. You guys let me know what you guys think. Health Commanders. Peace.